Okay, you're fine.
This is really delicious. I had never gotten this brand before. We loved it. And, um, but once you open the is here that I forgot to. We also got two packages of turkey hot dogs. It runs out. Mm -hmm. You know the, you know the Jenny O turkey I always get. Uh, Jenny O also has um, the turkey hot dogs that they sell. had a rotation and she knew whose turn it was to get the Chiquita banana sticker. For some reason I think she always put it on her forehead. I'm not I can't remember exactly but I think so. Never did we have dole and never look here's an advertisement. Never did they advertise anything. Another advertisement sticker for Beauty and the Beast. And again. Two dollars. Uh, something, I think it was like two thirty. And this little thing, a miracle of a buck fifty. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Austin Market. Um, remember the other night I was going through my empties? I shared with you these um, Boston Market meals. They were delicious. Uh, parma chicken parmesan, and the other one was meatloaf and mashed potatoes. So we were back at Lawn's, and I was desperately searching for those supper, supper no, meals again, and they were all sold out. And I know why they're that good. So I had to scout. It's okay. I still would prefer the Boston Market uh, meal. Four bucks of chicken parmesan. Mm. Um, Do not be deceived. Even though this looks like a healthy loaf of bread, the second ingredient is sugar. I was so frazzled when I got home. We were looking for Ezekiel bread. You know that Ezekiel is my go-to bread. And of course they were all out of it. So right next to the Ezekiel were Bread for three bucks and change. I'm so mad at myself. I read the label thinking, oh, this is healthy. Um, flax and sunflower. No artificial colors or flavors. Whole grain. Low on calories. So I, I grab it in good faith. Only to find out. First ingredient is flour. Flour, water, sugar. That is terrible, you guys. The bread is delicious. I'm telling you, it's just del it's it's that good. You could spread a uh, icing cake icing on top of it, and you feel like you're having angel food cake. Delicious, but knowing that the three first ingredients are flour, water, and sugar. Oh, um, ruins it for me. I, it's just like I'm biting into a, a sugar, sugar loaf. But you can't even taste the sugar, but just knowing that it's there, stressful. Mm. So this is a reminder. Obviously, I'm not doing well at it either. I get like, I get um, impulse buys in a grocery store, if you know this. Well, I'm going to be careful next time. Um, and here's a potato salad, classic potato salad. And I bought this one. Oops. I bought the small size. I thought the luck. Oh, traditionally we get this large tub. I don't, I don't know how big it is. It's a pretty big size tub. It's like seven, seven fifty. I thought it was five bucks, but I was wrong. We were paying five bucks because it happened to be on sale. This little thing was the three bucks and change. Um, I grabbed. Sorry. 
go-to beef. Um, I normally don't get the 85%. I normally get like the 90, um, 90 or 95 or 96 percent lean. Uh, but this happened to be a really awesome good price on sale. I think it was like six bucks. Five or six bucks. I had two of these. Another Michelangelo's. It looks good. Four bucks. I thought we're gonna give that a shot. And I got three three things of lettuce. I have to eat more greens, you guys. So I got three things of lettuce. That's like Anyways, four bucks. Last week, they had that peachy special. Um, I'm amazed at I guess living in the Southern California area, um, you just grow up real close to Hollywood and and everywhere. And then I'm a native California just after my whole life, and then you. 
start adding up just all the different celebrities or uh, I don't know, famous people that you've met or seen come into your life. It's really almost kind of unbelievable. It kind of now makes me wish I'd started a scrapbook from day one. My very, very first celebrity I ever met, which was, I've told you this story before, but I'll tell you again, was Al Lewis. He was the grandpa from the monster. Remember the show, The Monsters? Um, my very first celebrity ever. And he was so... He was just as uh, warm in person when we saw him. I saw him in Universal Studios as ever. He, he was just like the character that you see on the TV show. And the funny part is, well, not the funny part, but the... the the part that is so true of when we were growing up watching TV is a big part of television for me. Is I think I was just, I was born a Hollywood junkie. I knew the names of all the actors and actresses because back then, back in the day, all we had, we had one TV set in the whole house. Oh. Uh, and they would run the credits, so you would you would really see everything about the show, where it was filmed, who the name of the actors were, and you can bet your bottom dollar that I was always sitting there next to the TV screen at the end of every show, writing down the real names of the celebrities, because then, the very next day, we'd be at the grocery store, magazine section and looking at the Hollywood movie magazines. And this was me in grammar school, you guys. Seriously. I started I started my movie magazine addiction in grammar school. Oh my goodness. So this was in the late sixties. We had some relatives come out from Ohio. They had girls my age. Um, it was in the late 60s, it was when that song, Carpenter's song, uh, Close to You, I will never forget, we were driving on our way to Universal Studios from Simi Valley, and the song came on the radio, oh my goodness, the whole van just about flipped, we were so excited. We were screaming to my dad to hire it. <laughs> so when did that song come out close to you? I'm almost positive. Like the late 60s. But uh, or maybe we were maybe it was another trip, but I'm almost positive it was that trip. So we get there and we're having a wonderful time. And I realize I'm the only one with the celebrity eye scanning the Universal Studios. And there was Grandpa from the Monsters, and I had my little autograph book I already had come prepared. Back then, they had, I'll never forget, Thrifty Drugstore had the best little autograph books because at the end of each school year, we didn't have, um, uh, we didn't have yearbooks in grammar school, so but we would have our little autograph books. And at the end of the school year, we'd go around getting everyone's autograph or well wishes, and it was kind of funny now that I think about it. So I had my little autograph book, and I have it somewhere. If I ever find that little autograph book, I'll show you his autograph. It's pretty old now, obviously. I also have an old peachy folder I'll show you guys eventually somewhere too. Maybe I'll take a picture of that and put, put it on my Facebook. But anyways, so, uh, 
So there he was, Universal Studios, my first celebrity. So back to, uh, this is definitely a rambling. They're definitely rambling. Um, a few weeks ago, well, a couple weeks ago now, April 16th, they had the peachy special. And I'm watching it. And then at the end of the show, I realized I had seen uh, it was a story about Andy Gibb and Marilyn McCoo, John Travolta, and Keith Urban. I wasn't there. It's my daughter's story about Keith Urban. But I'm telling you, as a mom, when you're young daughter, she just graduated from high school, I believe, that summer after high school graduated. Oh my goodness, even though I didn't personally make it, I'd like to share that as a celebrity story because it was a family member who met him. And it, it's, it's almost like an all in the family story. It's just fun. So, I'm watching the PG special. There's John Travolta. And you guys have heard my John Travolta story before. I'm going to say it again. In the early 80s, I think it was like 1980. 19, late 1979, 1980. I pulled up and I was in Santa Barbara, California. I was, at the time, I believe it was the Patterson off ramp, and there was an AM PM mini mart, a gas station with a mini mart open 24 hours. So uh, I was around 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. I pull in to get gas and to grab something from the mini mart. I was with a friend and he says, don't look now. That is John Travolta at the counter. I go, yeah, right. And see, this is me. I'm so oblivious. Apparently he had seen the, the multi-million dollar Mercedes parked next to the store. It was like one of those little sports or Mercedes two-seater. And I didn't pay attention to all, anything. Uh, I'll be darned. No sooner go in there. Than, and then coming through the door, I'll never... He was wearing a gray suit, like a gray three-piece suit. Oh, my goodness. And he did have the bluest eyes. And he turned to look at me. And it was the face that I remember was from the movie Grease. And he kind of had his head tilted down with like a bashful smile. I don't know if I'm explaining the smile perfectly, but I, when I see that face on, on his older movies, especially from Grease, I recognize it. And so... And that's pretty much all I remember because I think I had no sooner gotten in there than he left. And I do, I, I do remember this part asking the guy at the counter, like, "Oh my goodness, isn't that exciting to see John Travolta?" And he says, "Oh, he comes here all the time." He says he comes here all the time. I go, "Oh my goodness, he does." And I, either I asked, "What does he get?" Or the guy just offers that he looks at the curly magazines. Uh, but he was gone. I had gone in there to get some goodies. Pay for my gas and get goodies. Um, but I'm kind of proud of myself that I didn't like, get awake in the knees. And I'm like, I turned into a baffling wet noodle. I'm glad that I was able to stay cool about it. Okay, so that was John Travolta. So we were watching the BG special, and I was remembering that, thinking, oh my goodness, that was kind of cool. Then, they were watching the Bee Gees, love the, all the songs from the Bee Gees. And then, um, I totally forgot about the little baby brother, Andy Gibb, which reminded me, do you guys remember that move, that show? I think it was on Friday nights, I'm not sure. It was called Solid Gold and the Solid Gold Dancers. Oh my goodness. Somehow, I got tickets to go. I got two tickets. And I think it was because at the end of the show, they would say, 
If you're in the LA area and you want free tickets, God, I don't remember how I got the tickets, but we got the tickets, we went. And back then, they had the stage and the sh they were filming it in like a, it wasn't like a nice little filming studio, it was a warehouse converted into a stage area. And they had tons of metal chairs. They had one aisle down the center, and uh, they had those metal chairs lined up on each side. They probably had like maybe 20 or 30 rows chairs, and 10 chairs in each row. And we were like on the right, um, kind of near the front like right on the aisle, on the end. Very cool. And we did, the segment that we saw, we did not see any solid gold dancers, was Andy Gibb. Oh my goodness, he was so tiny, you guys. And when you saw him on camera, you would never think that he was as tiny as he was in real life. Oh, he was super teeny tiny. So, we saw segments with him and Marilyn McCoo, like doing the introduction, and then introductions, all these introductions, and then a couple songs, but we never saw the people that they introduced, or we never saw the gold dance, all gold dance. But it was like a couple hours just for that, so I totally forgot that was another one of my uh, celebrity people, Marilyn McCoo and Andy Kipp, this was 79, and then, um, the, all the, and then Keith Urban was also on the Andy Kip, uh, special, and it reminded me of my daughter at the Ventura County Fair, oh my goodness, she has a friend who gets these little side jobs as, at the Ventura County Fair, she's like a top-notch, person they call on, and she always gets my daughter in with her because they're good friends. This is so cool. So anyways, the, this was like 10, 10 years ago, I guess, 10 or 15 years ago, not quite 15 years ago, when Keith Urban, he was kind of big. He wasn't brand new, but he was pretty big, and there she was in the very front row taking these awesome pictures of Keith Urban. And when I saw the pictures, I could not believe it. She had wonderful pictures, and it wasn't from an iPhone, it was from a camera, because back then, the cameras on iPhones weren't all that great. And I told her she needed to submit those photos, as you would definitely win an award. I said, you need to go to the thing there. Of course, she never did. They, we just gawked and gawked, and it, and then it was almost as if Keith Urban saw her right there in the front row. It wasn't even the front row; it was like at the foot of the stage. I don't know how, how they they allowed them to be at the foot of the stage, but he was like giving her cute little smiles and. Anyway, even though it wasn't my Keith Urban story, it was my daughter's, and, and at the time, because she was living at home, it was so exciting for all of us. And then to see how cute and nice he was to smile at her, and like raise his guitar right to her camera, it was really cute. And I wrote, that was Keith Urban, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, on my daughter. And then, um, what else, what's my other? Have you guys been watching Dancing with the Stars? Oh my goodness. Dancing with the Stars. The first year of it, I wasn't that excited. I know. But sub subsequent years, oh my goodness. We live now for Dancing with the Stars. It's just totally fun. Um, I enjoy the celebrities. And of course the dancing is fun. You know, I, I like that. But I think part that keeps me coming back more and more are the celebrities. Um, do you remember the time Donny Osmond was on? Donny Osmond
husband was just on again this past week or so. He was singing a song uh, for one of the shows. I think it was last week. Well, I have a Donny Osmond celebrity story. This was back in Cincinnati, Ohio. Approximately like 2004, 2005, 2006. And we were up that night, and we were just downtown Cincinnati, having fun. We were probably like in a karaoke place, having fun. And sure enough, across the street was a hotel with like two or three of these huge, uh, you know those tra motor homes, like the $300,000 motor homes. Very cool. And so we walked across the street because the motorhome had the lights on. And we were just going to go and tell the people, like, oh my goodness, what a beautiful motorhome. I'm pretty sure you guys know which one I'm talking about there, the, the mega motorhomes that are just gorgeous. So we get across the street, get up on this road, and there's a line of people going into the lobby of the hotel and I said, oh my goodness and it's all women, older women there's a few men there <laughs> so, because you know Donny Osmond now is like in his 50s or probably closer to 60 I think because the little brother, Jimmy Osmond I just read somewhere like he's 54 or something or 55 so you know Donny Osmond has to be closer to 60 so anyway, there's a sign of women I go, oh my goodness Long story short, Donnie Osmond is on his way out, and so I'm all excited, I'm like, oh my goodness. So, there's no way we can get in the line, so we're just kind of standing there, we're standing, get this, we're standing by the door of the motorhome, beautiful motorhome inside, you know, we're just, the door is open, we're standing there, me and my friend. And there's a driver, and bigger than beans, here comes like a crowd of people huddled around, Donny Osmond coming out of the lobby, rushing him up into the motorhome. And, you know, there's just like four or five guys around him. And they're escorting him into, into the motorhome. And we're standing right there at the entrance to the motorhome. And you, you can barely know, unless you knew it was him. He was so crowded with people. So I got, like, barely a glimpse of his hair. So, um, as they were coming toward the motorhome, we back, backed up a little bit. And then into the motorhome and we were looking through the front class dashboard of the motorhome which is huge they're just huge and and again I could just see like the side and back of his head but it was definitely Donny Osmond and as the as the as his entourage was getting him on to the bus he was kind of looking out the window or looking out the door that had closed you know, at all the line of people, the women in line, who now were disappointed because he was no longer there. His time was up. So I was trying to figure out, like, oh, my goodness, what's the big deal? Why are they escorting him out like in a, like in a, with so much security? But now I know why. Because those women were the line a long way down the street were so disappointed. So I guess they have to take precautions thinking that the people waiting in line are going to be so upset and do something drastic. But it was that was fun. Even though I didn't get to look at his face eye to eye, it was still Donny Osmond. And that's my Donny Osmond celebrity moment. It, <laughs> and he was wearing like a dark, a really nice dark suit. Uh, I don't remember that he had a tie on, but it was like a nice sports coat, suitish kind of look without a tie. Let's see. Okay, so that was around 2004 to 2000.
was in Cincinnati, Ohio. Then, uh, I have a picture of myself with Blake Shelton. Right as he was becoming big. So I'll have to look at his record, of like his first record. He had only had his first record of Austin. So after that record became a hit, um, you know, he didn't have swarms of people. And the local country music station was having Blake Shelton. And somehow we went to that. They said, he's going to be there. Back, back then it was the Ventura. Uh, it was the hotel, the Ventura the Hotel there. I forget the name of it at the time. They've, they've changed names now. But it's like the only big 50-story hotel on the beach of Ventura. And at the top it has this revolving room. And so we go, and me and a handful of my girlfriends, my karaoke queens, we would go out. Oh. Oh. We go there and there's hardly nobody there. In the whole room, there was probably like 50 fans. There may have been 75, and the other 75 were associated with the hotel and with Blake Sheldon. And, oh my goodness, I was like so surprised. It was really like one-on-one. -on -one. Because there was no fear, and there were no hardly no guys in the audience. It was all women. And so again, this was right before he became big. This was when he had his long curly hair. And I could kind of tell by the way. We, I got a picture with him. Which people were taking pictures. And he was really looking at me. And nice. And I could tell. He just, when we took our picture, he really cuddled me up underneath his arm. He's pretty tall. And I remember thinking that he really loves women. I could just tell that. So, no, I never had, like, intimate conversations with Blake Sheldon. I could just feel by the way he was looking at me. And not that I'm even, like, that gorgeous of a gal. But that night, I must admit, I looked pretty good that night. Um, I had on my black, I think I had like silver and leather stuff on black. I had like a black knitted top and um, my, my black boots. So I did look good that night, but it's not like I'm fair or faucet or anything like that. But I could just tell that he loved women. Or not that he was a womanizer, but he really had an eye for women. If I, you could say that, not in a bad way. There was nothing bad about it, but you could tell he liked good-looking women that were dressed well. Okay, so um, all these years later, I always look back on that, and I, I have the picture around here somewhere. And I'll show it to you someday. And I always feel bad because um, he has been married and divorced twice. Married and divorced the first time. And I think it was like a blonde high school sweetheart, I'm not sure, or childhood friend. And there was infidelity. Uh, and um, Miranda Lambert. And I thought that would be perfect because they're both from the same Oklahoma. So they kind of sit from the same place. And that didn't work out. I was just kind of sad, and always in the back of my mind, I thought, is it because Blake can't be faithful? No, that's not nice to think that about anybody. But then just recently, I believe it was a day or two ago, I was reading the, the National Enquirer, and they had a little blurb article about Blake Sheldon, who has a mother. The reason his parents got divorced because his mother always out with other guys or had a bunch of affairs. 
and then he has a brother who is a junkie or druggie or an alcoholic or something. So, anyways, I kind of feel bad about that. But uh, I know how stuff like that can be stressful. Uh, I know. But anyways, that's my little. This has really turned into a rambling story, has it? Was Blake Sheldon? I talked about Blake Sheldon, Donny Osmond. Then, let me tell you about this movie the other day. I'm watching this movie, and it dawns on me how many celebrities I had seen in this movie. And you get to a point to where you just see these people, and you just know have a familiarity with them, but then you just forget all of them. Time that you met them. That's why I wished from my very first celebrity meeting, I wished I had kept a scrapbook because it would be a, that would be really a lovely scrapbook to go to have today to look back on. There's a movie called Stagecoach. It was made in 1986. It's like a little country and western movie. Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash is in it. Willie Nelson, John Snyder. Remember John Snyder from. Um, oh, Daisy Duke show. What's the name of that show? I forgot the actual name. J uh, June Ca Carter Cash is in it. Um, I have a celebrity story with all of those. Um, Willie Nelson we saw in concert an afternoon at the Ventura County uh, Fair. And nobody was there, and it was like, I could not believe it. This was around 2000, maybe 2002, 2003. So we get tickets, we go, and when you go to there, the outdoor, you just, it's just metal chairs on a, on a dirt outside stage. It's not a big deal and wherever you first come, first serve. I'll never forget how shocked I was that we kept looking behind us and there were hundreds of empty chairs and we were just right down there in front getting up and going to the you know, bathroom down the aisle. They had like a little outhouses. Uh, I remember him making a remark a time or two when I got up, my husband got up. He'd say, yeah, where are your folks going? And I felt I couldn't believe it, how fun it was to be right down there, right at the front, at the bottom of the stage. Uh, I'll never know why nobody was there. I can't remember, was it the middle of the day and a work day? I don't know. But it was just normal Willie Nelson. I don't know if people were mad at him because he didn't pay taxes. I, I don't know. Uh-oh, I hear rumbling. So that was my Willie Nelson. That was kind of fun. And then John Snyder, I think I've shared this with you before. His daughter went to school with my girls at like a private Christian school, local. And everybody knew it but me. <laughs> and he would come to pick up the kids in the parking lot and I'd see all this crowd of kids and the moms. He had like a white or a light-colored SUV. 
I never paid attention, but I'm somehow it comes up that, yeah, that's such and such. God, I, was jumping, so I, I said, what? And my girls were saying, didn't you know that, Mom? And it was nothing to nobody. Like, the kids, she it was, just, it was just part of everything. And it was no big deal. I could not believe it. And even the moms, when they were over there, she, his daughter, I believe, was on my daughter's sports team because all the girls played all the sports, volleyball. They just were really good at sports. And his daughter was part of the sports team. So when the moms were there, it had nothing to do with the fact that he was John Snyder. They were coordinating basketball or volleyball stuff. So anyways, that really wasn't my celebrity sighting. That was my celebrity near miss. I couldn't believe it. But that's kind of cool, I think, for our daughters to have um, John Snyder's daughter on their sports team, and that John Snyder would pick up his daughter in the afternoon. That's kind of cool. And then Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash, we'd seen them in concert at the Santa Barley, uh, Santa Barbara Arlington Theater. But I think that's what it was in Arlington. Oh my goodness, you guys. Johnny Cash was so tall back then. I remember he had on these black boots, and we were like in the middle of the a theater, not too close, not too far. I remember looking at the how tall his black boots were, thinking, he is so tall, those black boots must be as tall as I am. He looked like he was 10 feet tall, but I guess because Jim Carter Cash was so short maybe, but he just stood out from he had like his backup band behind him, a bunch of instrument behind him, and June Carter Cash was with him, and he had a daughter that he introduced on stage, and I really cannot remember. I do not believe it was um, Roseanne Cash. Oh my goodness, I fell in love with her album she came out with. I was addicted. I don't think it was Roseanne Cash that was up there. I think it was another daughter. And she was she had stage fright. She was a little nervous, but he helped her. It was so cute. But I will never forget looking upon Johnny Cash on stage, how big he was. And it was just wonderful. He sang all the fun songs. So that was my June Carter, Johnny Cash moment. Oh, and they were just all these four I wished I had a scrapbook commemorating all these times we met up. So, I guess that's all for now. Huh? What else do I have? So well, that was fun. Let's do some. See how it's so easy for my videos to turn into rambling videos. Alright, so we have, we'll start where we left off. Now, Jeannie Ebery writes, That gum chewing is gross. Sounds like you're chewing your cut. Oh my goodness. It's from one of my typing videos. Like last year, I think. Nora Ruma. You should do more videos of you eating the whole thing. I probably should. I like eating the whole thing. But thank you, Nora, for your comment and your support. Kelly Holson. Holsonson, right? I just friended you on Facebook. Yay, and I friended you back, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. New Jersey J. Why... Uh, I am deleting this one because he's saying bad words and I don't mind the bad words for myself. Yeah, he's upset that I'm whispering and he tells me to get a life. But there's a nicer way to say it. Um, anyways, that's done. Victor Lee. Good stuff. And that's from my Thank you, Victor and Lee, and for your comment and for watching my videos. Lisa Domain. 
You make me so relaxed. Are your videos help me both at work and at home when where I need it most. And gum chewing, I love it. Keep up the videos. Thank you, Lisa. And don't forget to pass on my videos. If they help you relax, maybe you can help someone else relax. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Greg, Greg Geek writes, oh, how do I live stream? He says, click on the camera and go live. Simple as that, dear. <laughs> Thank you, Greg Geek. I appreciate you. I know it's probably so easy, and I'm making I make things more difficult than they are. Wendy C, I always have enjoyed your videos, and you're one of the best. But lately, the smacking of the gum can't take it. It's a little too much. Not trying to be mean, but it's keeping me from enjoying them. Love you though. Oh, Wendy, Wendy C, you are absolutely right. I even noticed that, and I thought that same thing to myself. Thank you for calling me out on that. And if I have too much gum in my mouth, that's what happens. So I have to be very particular with a, how big piece of gum I have in my mouth. So thank you, Wendy. And I will try to be better that because I'm with you. I like the gentle gum chewing. I don't like the great big gum chewing. But thank you, Wendy. It's fun to read your comments. And X Usako writes, glad I could be of help. I'm not that great with explanation. Hope you didn't run into any problems while customizing your Facebook address. Usako, I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna go back when the time when I can get everything organized to do it. I'm gonna go back to your comment and and kind of personalize my name on my Facebook address. Does that a huge shopping haul. I rambled on about my celebrity stories. Um, and then I forgot to go through your comment. feather pens on Amazon, by the way. I think it was like six feather pens for like 12 bucks. Mm. Anyways, I think I've, one or two of them have run out of ink. One or two of them I've misplaced, and I've got two or three of them here in my little my little go-to desk. There's just something so relaxing, Mom. That little feather, the feel of it is so soft and relaxing, and even to watch it.
never go back.